When I sit here and praise about how much I love the iPad Air to everybody, it's hard for me to not include the Magic Keyboard in the conversation. It changes my iPad experience so much that it's hard for me to even recommend an iPad without the Magic Keyboard, especially for people who are looking to use the iPad as a viable laptop replacement. However, this keyboard is not perfect. It does have flaws. And in today's video, we're gonna break down all the pros and cons and help you make the most informed buying decision. Before we dive into today's review, please do drop a like down below and subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. We are on our road to 14,000 subscribers. You guys have no idea how a like and a subscription goes such a long way in helping me make more videos every week for the channel. So the first time I opened up the Magic Keyboard and put my iPad on it, I was blown away. You can really tell that Apple put a lot of thought into the design aesthetic of the iPad Magic Keyboard combo. They even went as far as to include a USB-C pass-through charging port on the bottom left-hand side of the hinge. It just gives it more clean charging experience when you have your iPad on a desk so you don't have to have the cord kind of dangling out of the bottom of the iPad itself. And it also is very reminiscent of what it's like to charge a MacBook because all of our MacBooks have a USB-C port on the bottom left-hand side too. I gotta say it though, the signature floating look of the iPad on the Magic Keyboard is genuinely very charming to look at. I would go as far as to say that it's almost inviting. Like every time I walk around my home and I see my iPad floating on the Magic Keyboard, I just wanna grab it and start using it. It's just so aesthetically pleasing to look at. The keyboard itself has all the keys that you'd expect to be able to operate a computer minus a dedicated function key row. So that means you can't change things like volume or iPad brightness directly from the keyboard itself. You still have to use the physical buttons or the touchscreen to do so. This is definitely the top of the list of common complaints with the Magic Keyboard, but I wanna address some of them in this video because not all of them are warranted. By far the most common one is that people complain that you can't manually adjust the keyboard brightness from the keyboard itself and you have to go into the settings to do that. One thing I want to point out is that the Magic Keyboard is actually using the ambient light sensors from the iPad to dictate how bright the keyboard should be. So in a real world scenario you shouldn't need to go into the settings to adjust the brightness of the keyboard. The keyboard just can do that for you. So that's probably why there isn't a dedicated key for that. Or another big complaint is that there's no escape key on the Magic Keyboard. So if you're watching a full screen video, for example, you can't just press a key to get out of it. Most people just have to press the touch screen to navigate out of a full screen video. And this is partially true, but there is a workaround by just doing a gesture on your trackpad. You are able to squeeze out of a full screen video and it's the equivalent of having an escape key. One gripe that I will kind of jive with in this video and that I do agree with is that I kind of find it frustrating that there's no volume adjustment key on this keyboard. Like I get it, I know I can adjust volume in control center or I could use just the physical buttons on the iPad to adjust the volume, but it just feels kind of clunky. And especially for somebody who's been using a MacBook for so long, I'm so used to just pressing the up and down volume keys on the function key row of that keyboard. But anyway, at the end of the day, when you focus on the design of the Magic Keyboard, there doesn't seem to be much more space for a function key row. So I think these compromises are fine and I'm okay with it because the design is just so beautiful that I can live without a function key row, at least in my life. A quick note about the trackpad, I think it's excellent. It's nowhere near as big as the trackpads we're used to on MacBooks, but it's definitely still a good size and it's very smooth and responsive to use on the iPad. And that's thanks to the smart connectors of this Magic Keyboard, so there's no Bluetooth issues or latency, like we're not even using Bluetooth at all when we're using the keyboard and the trackpad. It's all done like directly through the iPad smart connector, so you pretty much get no latency. It's super smooth to use. So I kind of want to deviate a bit. Uh, one of my biggest concerns when it came to buying 
The Magic Keyboard is the height and the adjustable hinge. I was afraid the iPad wouldn't rest high enough on the Magic Keyboard and adjust enough for me to find it comfortable to use in long sessions and you know get neck strain. I was just kind of worried about things like that. I'm happy to confirm that none of my fears came true. The iPad rests pretty much at a good height on the Magic Keyboard and the ability to adjust the hinge to the right, like bend uh, is good too. Like it, I have no strains on my neck while using it. And I just want to focus on that hinge for a second. It's actually a two-step process. You have to first raise your iPad to open and then it locks on the bottom half. And then on the top half of the back side of the Magic Keyboard, you can then bend the iPad to the right like angle so you have the best viewing experience. One thing I'll say about this though is that opening and closing the iPad with the Magic Keyboard is like the worst experience ever. When you close this thing, it is like locked in key. Like the magnets in this thing are so powerful that you, I always find I have to like dig my nail or kind of itch my finger into it to open the iPad to get into it. It's nothing like the MacBook Air that I have where I just use my one finger and gently rise it open to get access to Mac OS. Is that really a bad thing at the end of the day? I don't know, I, I think like, it's awesome knowing that the magnets are powerful and your iPad is not coming off that keyboard anytime soon if it, you know, if any scenario begs for it to come off, but definitely not the easiest thing to open. I found that the easiest way to open the iPad with the Magic Keyboard is to have it kind of facing up and then pulling the keyboard down to open it. That has been a good solution. In terms of the weight with the iPad plus the Magic Keyboard, it's definitely steering to feeling heavy, but I don't find this to be a bad thing. I think all of us as humans, we subconsciously associate weight with importance and premium. Uh, so with the iPad, with the Magic Keyboard, I find that it feels important and it feels premium because of the heftiness that it comes with. In a more technical sense, the weight actually does have other added benefits as well. For example, when you're typing with the iPad with the Magic Keyboard on a flat surface, the iPad isn't gonna be dangling. It's gonna be perfectly still while you're typing away. I also find that if you try to knock the iPad off balance, the bottom weight of the Magic Keyboard is heavy enough to kind of have it fall back to the ground. Obviously, if you push the iPad far enough, it will tip over, but you know, that tipping point is pretty far. Like you have to really wanna knock your iPad over uh, for that to happen. Ultimately, no matter how pretty the iPad and the Magic Keyboard is together, what really matters is gonna be the typing experience on this thing. I'm gonna go out and just say that this is one of my favorite keyboards I've ever used in any device, not just iPads, but also laptops, desktops. The Magic Keyboard for the iPad is definitely a winner when it comes to typing experience. The keys are very tactile and clicky and very responsive thanks to the smart connector. And it's not too loud either. So you don't have to worry about disturbing anybody if people are sleeping at night or if you're in a quiet library typing away on your iPad. I have to mention that I am using the iPad Air with the 11 inch Magic Keyboard. So it's definitely smaller than the 12.9 inch Magic Keyboard, for example. So due to how small my setup is, comfort is definitely in jeopardy with this and I wouldn't type away on the Magic Keyboard with the iPad Air for hours on end every single day. It would just get too uncomfortable. I would still prefer to use a full size keyboard with like a wrist rest or something more ergonomic if I plan to be typing or on the keyboard for eight hours. But if you're just a commuter or you're somebody going to the library and you just need to kind of bang out some work for like three to four hours, I think you won't experience any discomfort even on the 11 inch Magic Keyboard. I've also tested all all kinds of typing positions with the Magic Keyboard and I haven't had any issues to be honest. The most common one I think for all of us is just kind of sitting slouched on the couch and I find that the Magic Keyboard and the iPad Air hold up. It's still comfortable. The iPad isn't really like dangling that much. It all is just works and it's a good experience. Is it as good as a laptop? 
No, I, I still think a laptop is more comfortable on a couch, like slouch kind of uh, scenario. And that, that's really because of the fact that uh, a 13 inch MacBook Air, for example, just has way more aluminum metal below the keyboard where I can rest my wrist while I'm typing. So it's just a bit more comfortable in my hands. Whereas the 11 inch Magic Keyboard, half of my hand is off the keyboard resting on my leg and it's it just feels a little off. It feels a little bit like uncomfortable. So at the end of the day, this keyboard is beautiful. It types very well. And there's a third thing I haven't talked about yet, and that's its integration with iPadOS. The Magic Keyboard adds a layer of functionality to your iPad that just makes it feel more like a computer than ever before. This is all thanks to the shortcuts you can do on the keyboard itself, as well as the trackpad gestures that you can do to make it feel like Mac OS in a lot of ways, but with iPad OS benefits. Three finger swipe up brings up all the background apps. Command spacebar gives you spotlight search right away, just like on Mac OS. Command H brings you right back to the home screen. The list goes on. And all I'll say is that there's no way I could use an iPad moving forward without the Magic Keyboard just on the functionality benefits alone. iPad OS is just way smoother uh, with the Magic Keyboard. Even with all that being said, this keyboard is still $299 to start, and it's the most expensive accessory for the iPad by a mile in comparison to the other stuff you can get on Amazon from companies like Logitech, for example. You know, one of my favorite sayings, and I think it really applies to this dilemma here, is that price is only an issue in the absence of value. I definitely can acknowledge that Apple charges high price tags for a lot of the stuff that they put out there, and sometimes it's a miss. Like, sometimes they really are just going over the top and charging too much money uh, for something that they're selling. And with the keyboard, I mean, you could argue, I, it is quite a, like $300 for a tablet keyboard is, I mean, it's, a, it's insane. It, it's almost absurd how much Apple is charging. But when you compare it to everything else on the market, I, <laughs> I mean, even if I was to save a, a hundred bucks and get something cheaper, I would still not be satisfied because it's just nowhere near comparable to the iPad and the Magic Keyboard combo. I just personally feel that the Magic Keyboard does the best job of bridging the gap of bringing the iPad to a viable laptop replacement. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Please do drop a like down below if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are brand new to our channel. We are on our road to 14 thousand subscribers so that's super exciting and comment down below hashtag magic keyboard if you finish the video but anyways i'll catch all of you guys in another video later this week peace